the New York Times, I, I talked about this, I believe, yesterday and perhaps even Friday. I, I, I think the article was, came out on Friday about the head of the Federal Election Commission saying, well, I'll give you the, the, the actual quote. The likelihood of the laws being enforced is slim, said Anne Ravel, the chairwoman of the Federal Election Commission. Now, $10 billion is probably going to be spent in this election in, in 2016. $10 billion. The Federal Election Commission is charged with oversight over how that money is spent. Already, there is evidence that crimes are being committed with regard to campaign finance. And the FEC is unable to do anything. In fact, here's how bad it gets. Steve Bennon, over at uh, the Maddow blog, Rachel Maddow's blog over on MSNBC, writes, Last month, the Federal Election Commission was planning to hold an event, to host an event honoring the agency's 40th anniversary. In a dispute that seemed perfectly emblematic of the FEC's dilemma, dilemmas, Democrats and Republicans on the commission couldn't agree on where to hold the gathering or what to serve for breakfast. Seriously. There are three Republicans and three Democrats, and it's majority rule. And the three Republicans are saying, essentially, if the billionaires are going to cheat in this election to get more Republicans elected, as they have done in past elections, by many indications, we, the Republicans on the FEC, are going to prevent the FEC from doing anything about it. So Anne Ravel, who's a Democrat, who's the chair, chairperson of the FEC, just said to the Koch brothers and to all the other, Shelley Adelson, all the other billionaires, the right-wing billionaires, the left-wing billionaires, although left-wing billionaires tend to be highly transparent, right-wing billionaires not so much, just said to all the billionaires, doesn't matter, go ahead. It's as if the referees have left the field. You know, I often use uh, uh, um, football, soccer, baseball, you know, sports as a metaphor for our economy. An economy doesn't exist in a vacuum. It doesn't just magically appear out of nowhere. An economy is created, and there are rules created for that economy. An economy is established, there, you have, you know, here's what a contract means, here's what a contract doesn't mean, here's how a contract is enforced, here are the courts to, to enforce, you know, the, the enforcement mechanism for that, for those contracts, or for those agreements or deals or whatever. Our government plays a huge role in commerce in the United States. You walk into a store and, and steal something, the government will stop you. You could say, hey, it's a free market, right? No, it's not. It's a carefully regulated market. And, you know, one of the pieces of Reaganism is to destroy that regulation. And they've been quite successful at it. Which is one of the reasons why the poor people are getting poorer, the, the middle class is getting poorer, and the rich are getting fabulously richer, because that was Ronald Reagan's job. The whole point of the Reagan revolution was to turn America, to take America away from the middle class, which FDR had given it to, right? FDR not only created the American middle class, but then he handed... The, the, the majority of the wealth or a large chunk of the wealth in the United States to the middle class. And in the years since Reagan, at least $14, $15 trillion has gone from the middle class straight to the top 1%. The rules of the game change. So that's the economic version of it. Well, there's also a political version of it. Politics is like sports, too. And I don't mean the who's going to win and who's going to lose thing. I mean, there have to be rules for the game. Can you imagine a football game where the team that had the most money could determine where their goalpost was set? The team that had the most money could determine how many men they could have on the, on the field at, you know, at any given moment? Can you imagine a, 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 uh, a football game where one team says, we don't want any referees watching us. You can watch the other guys, or the other guys will voluntarily choose to play by the rules. But we're not going to. We're not going to voluntarily choose to play by the rules. That's today's Republican Party. It is a corrupt, I think RICO corrupt, 
criminal enterprise and or something damn close to it, a, a scam. And then you got the scammers like Mike Huckabee. There's a great piece on Politico today, the populist one percenter. Mike Huckabee was not a millionaire when he ran in 2008, but now he lives in a three million dollar, 10,000, 11,000 square foot beachfront mansion in Florida. He uh, has spent over. Where was it? I got to highlight these things. Over a quarter million dollars in private jet air travel. I think my pen fell on the floor. A quarter million dollars in private jets. Mike Huckabee. Much of it paid for by other people. Right? He's solidly in the 1% now. How did he get there? Running for president. I'm telling you, these, these, every single person who has announced the run for president so far on the Republican side is not a serious candidate. They are serious hustlers who want to sell books and jack up their speaking fees.